What it do, everybody? You know who it is. I don't need an introduction to this video. It's, you're on my channel, obviously, right? Yeah. Anyway, this is being recorded live on Twitch TV slash Shinkensu. Be there or be square. You don't want to be square, right? 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 We're gonna discuss something uh, called easy inputs in fighting games. Now, a lot of people tend to scoff at this and whatnot, but the biggest inspiration for this talk is um, after they announced Project L, they even said in the video, you know, we know there's a lot of discourse around easy execution in fighting games, and you know, their goal isn't to make this, you know, they didn't really like they already know this was going to happen and they're aware of it but they're taking the approach of easy to pick up hard to master which i believe in that design philosophy around fighting games and just gaming in general that games should be easy to pick up and hard to master because there should be like a plethora of things that are in the game but this isn't necessarily about project l entirely it's more about easy inputs and how they've come along in fighting games over the last few generations of games actually so to push with that, right, we have to understand one major thing is that when it comes to simplification of a game, it's clearly to get more people to play it because it's it's a proven fact in some cases that just because the game is hard doesn't mean a bunch of people are going to pick it up because it's hard to play, right? They want you to pick this up so you can pick it up, enjoy yourself, and like if you want to explore the game at that level, you can. If you want to play it at a lower level or intermediate level, you can too, right? And that's been the case for a lot of developers, especially moving forward since roughly 2009. So again, the design philosophy is easy to pick up, hard to master, right? So where did this start? This started pretty much in Street Fighter 4. A lot of people seem to forget that Street Fighter 4 started to push the easy to pick up, hard to master. Now, what I have here in my notes, right, is excerpts and statements from Ono, right? Mind you, this video was initially supposed to be a big, long video essay. I have a lot of notes here, but I want to do it this in this fashion with you guys and talk to you about it. So, um, basically, what I have here is Street Fighter 4 took a more simplified approach. It was designed to clearly take the game back to the roots of Street Fighter 2 which wasn't very difficult to be honest. It's just a big strategy based game with pretty much simple inputs, more or less, right? Uh, and it has its own set of mechanics that kind of push the base of Street Fighter 2, right? So now this is a quote from Ono, right? From one of the, uh, this, is, this is from some interview they had with him. Basically he says, if we take a moment to consider fighting games as tools rather than games, we can say that Street, the Street Fighter 2 series was the sort of fighting tool that was enjoyed by uh, a large amount of people for its time. Now, none of us at a certain age need to consult the manual to know how to play the game. The rule book, quote unquote, is simply embedded into our brains at this point. The inherent familiarity of this system is extremely important. The same goes for sports or any other kind of game. The shorter the barrier of entry, the easier it is for a player to grasp the rules, the more likely you are to draw a large number of people in. This is especially important for games with the one-on-one -on -one aspect. Both players should have a basic uh, understanding of how to play the game if we really want a fair fight. Now, this is coming from someone who makes Street Fighter 4. This is the main, the lead producer of Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 up until recently, right? So, so, and this is 2008, like, 2009, like, the arcade version of this game came out in 2008, right? And Street Fighter 4 had been in development for quite some time. And so even they, even Ono started this, now I wouldn't even say that he started it in particular, I think the gaming shift at that point in time was to try to make games a little bit easier to pick up to get a bigger audience. Now, over time, Street Fighter 4 became a technical game with each iteration, it's pretty obvious, right? with you know each update introducing new characters new balance etc etc the game just got 
harder and it became a big success based on that design. I think it's hard to say that Street Fighter 4 was not a success. It was. And it definitely brought a lot of people who were out of fighting games back into fighting games. Now, Street Fighter 4 wasn't the only game to do this. Other games moving forward pulled the same number. Arxis did that with Persona. And to some degree, Blaze Blue, but I have more notes here on Persona. So, Persona 4 Arena and Ultimax, which is the sequel, those games push easy to pick up, hard to master. You know, one of the big design philosophies around this game was to bridge the gap of players to not only controlling the main character, but to be able to control the persona as well. And the fact that they achieved this with a, as a four button fighter, right? With two buttons dedicated for the main character or the point character and two buttons dedicated again for the persona. And what they did was for the design, they used combination, they used button combinations to implement other aspects of the game. So for example, this is the one game where you have the easiest reversals of any fighting game. And I mean, the absolute easiest, like super easy. Like you press two buttons, you get a DP, that easy, right? So they had what rolling, they had small jumps and they had uppercut and all that was, all those extra mechanics were done at the press of two buttons. Instead of implementing more buttons that you could use to press for dodge or something like that, it was just a four button game, right? And to be honest with you, this was something that a lot of people groaned about when it was coming out. They're like, oh, this is going to be easy, blah, blah, blah. This is this is not cool, you know, but Persona 4 and Ultimax, well, the Persona 4 fighting games in general, the only, and there's only two of them, right? Those games were very, very fun to play and a lot of people actually enjoyed those games, a lot of people despite all the moaning and groaning about easy inputs. Now, this didn't just stop there with Arc Systems, right? They did it again in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, right? And they took an even more simplified approach and tried to even consult, you know, Street Fighter players to kind of push the more grounded footsies, more Street Fighter-esque while still implementing anime game style things into the game, right? And honestly, it went well. You know, you had the ability to do both things. You had the ability to do easy inputs because there's an easy input button, if I recall right. And uh, you also had the ability to just do the motion. Now, if you use the easy input, what happens in this game is the game has a cooldown system for the characters and their special moves, right? It, you did the EX version or regular version or whatnot, or using the easy input uh, version. They all have pros and cons. If you use the easy input version, it had a longer cooldown. If you did the actual input, it had a shorter cooldown. Now there were strategies around this, which is really good, right? But this game also pushed easy to pick up hard to master. I won't get into the game's balance and where it is now currently, but the fact that it, it pretty much rides the easy to pick up hard to master while implementing cooldowns and having a system that's there for players if you are having trouble, right? For example, they also have easy input supers. They also have different properties, right? Which I thought was kind of interesting. It kind of made the game have a little bit more technicality to it because if you use the actual input versus the easy input, that could change the Oki situation or the knockdown situation, the spacing situation. So it offers quite a bit in that regard. So I think that that was one of the cooler things about Grand Blues. It has its small nuanced technicality to it based on the input system. So that's pretty neat. Now, of course, with that, it also means it has easy input shoryukens, which people were complaining about that too. But it's like, when you think about it, why would you spend time trying to do the input for the reversal timing when you can legitimately just spam the easy input version with EX and have a long, like, it's an uppercut, right? It's going to be on a longer cooldown, but who cares? The reward was you just to break up, you know, the momentum, stop the Oki, etc., etc. So it makes sense where you do it. And I mean, I can even talk about BB Tag, where that game basically rides the coattails of Persona. And it's practically about the same, with a tag system in mind, with even more system mechanics. But there's one main game that I feel Project L rides on, and it is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, I believe, is the ground foundation of... What I, what I think is the ground foundation of Project L, because these guys also made Rising Thunder, 
and they already had a cooldown system within Rising Thunder to begin with. However, Battle for the Grid took a lot of that but didn't add the cooldown system and instead used special move inputs with a special button where there's neutral special, down special, back special, forward special, and then air special. The only characters in the game that actually have regular inputs are, uh, what's it called? Chun-Li and Ryu, who are in the game currently, right? Big ups to that developer putting them in the game. But the idea here still remains is that there's a lot of cool combos in that game and you literally do them with like forward, back, down, up, blah, blah, blah. And the combos are pretty swag. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Like, the combos in Battle for the Grid are extremely swag. So, and there's a lot of high-level players at that game, too. And the game doesn't have difficult inputs. Like, I've watched that game evolve and see how players play it. It's really cool. Sure, there's a lot of one-touches in that game. But, I mean, that's their way of kind of, like, having X-Factor without X-Factor, I suppose. If every character has a way to, like, kill you if they touch you, then it kind of balances out the one versus three situation since it is a team game. Uh, but... With that being said, it also has its own technicalities. It has this Battle for the Grid, I think, is a really, really good game. Like, it didn't start out on the best foot, but it's a really good game now. But again, that where it started and where it is now is irrelevant towards the input system. Now, I'm giving you guys examples of games. Now, where am I going with this? So, let me give you guys the honest truth about execution, and I'm going to push forward with another topic here. So, the honest truth about execution is that being able to execute when it's time is very important and, instead, and essential to playing any competitive game, whether it's a fighting game or shooting game, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to execute right when, it, when, it's, when it's time, right? So why do we put an emphasis on execution, right? Because the thing is, no matter how hard or easy it is to execute specials or combos, what matters the most is doing it when it counts and being able to convert when it counts, right? especially when these opportunities don't always present themselves in a match, right? And I believe firmly that the developers understand the idea of simplifying inputs, lets the player actually have the confidence to execute when it's time without feeling the anxiety of missing when that opportunity presents itself. And I'll give you a small example of that. Games like Marvel 2, where hit confirming is very hard. Street Fighter 4, hit confirming is hard. Street Fighter 3 hit confirming is hard. You know, in these newer games, getting hit confirms is a lot easier and it allows players to react faster or react to these hit confirms to be able to dish out the damage. So in essence, some of the idea behind easy inputs and the new combo systems in a lot of these games is to allow players to do damage when they see the opportunity. If they happen to land a straight hit, they should be able to convert. And I think that's a big... In some cases, one would see it as like, well, that's kind of jacked up because I shouldn't get comboed if, if I do this. Well, there's different rules in these games now. So if you're not acclimated to playing to the rules of the game, then you're just going to get blown up. That's And that's only the only person to blame at that point is you. You have to play the game the way it's meant to be played and play around the system that they give you. Right. So moving forward with that. Right. I think there's in some cases a lot of people who put heavy, heavy emphasis on their execution being godlike. And, you know, I spent like well over 1200 hours trying to master this one BNB and convert like this. It's like cool, right? Cool. I get it. It feels good to have spent half of your life to do low forward super with Chun Li and Street Fighter 3. Got you. It feels good. I get it. You spent mad time on that. I understand. However, this is a new era and not everyone has time to spend to do that should people spend well over 1200 hours just to land combos consistently as you play the game that's going to happen but like i don't think anyone makes it their center point focus right but like i think too many people put too much emphasis on their execution being amazing and not enough on the next thing that i'm about to talk about now which is strategy right it's pretty obvious where i was going with this right because i think strategy is the one thing that never gets talked about when it comes to easy inputs in fighting games ever and when I bring this up, people tend to like either turn a blind eye or like just literally mute when I'm talking about this because they refuse to understand that execution is one part of fighting games and strategy is the other. Because you can have the best execution in the world, but if you can't, like if you have no strategy, you have no neutral, there's no way you're beating anybody. It just, it just, it doesn't work this way. You, you, you can like the amount of people that could play Eddie, Rosado and AC and still have 
poor strategy, they're easy to beat because there's nothing to think about. You've already shown me that you cannot play neutral. You've shown me that your neutral game is poop. So just because you can execute triple unblockables and stun combos, it doesn't matter. Anyone can sit in training mode and practice these things. They can grind out execution till they're blue in the face. But if your strategy is weak, you're not hitting anyone with any of that stuff. Sure, you'll hit them with them when it's time. But the other part of it is, do you have the do you have the execution confidence to land that? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You know, and can you land it in a tournament situation, in a high in a high pressure situation, in a high stake situation, exhibition? Let, let the chips are down, last game, last round. Can you land it then? Landing those things in training mode is completely different be, than, than landing it when you're playing against actual people. Because guess what? People are not going to allow you to get the optimal starter, you know, the optimal this, the optimal that, the quote unquote optimals, because it's an actual match. No one's going to let you get that for free. You have to earn that. And the only way you can earn that is to have strategy. That's why I scoff sometimes when I see these starters, like combo starters in these fighting games on, on, on Twitter where they're like optimal damage. Yeah, if someone lets you get air dash, like box jump H, this, that, assist, this, that, and the third RC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, you'll you'll you'll, you'll like destroy their life bar. But the likelihood of that happening is low. So you have to learn how to convert this spike that starter, period. You have to. So. Moving back in the strategy, right? This is key. And I think the, the developers of these games understand strategy is key. And I think that they understand also that the players are undermining strategy, right? And I think that's a big part of what Project L pushes for is for strategy. Like they mentioned that they want this to be a game where again, easy to pick up, hard to master because what, what what's gonna make Project L a very difficult game is team synergy. Like, what are you gonna pick with your team? Clearly you're gonna be like, I wanna play my two favorite characters, you know? Like look at the amount of people who've been playing DBFZ and had to wait so long to find synergy or their characters getting buffed to the point where they can play and have the synergy that they wanted with their favorite characters. Maybe, don't know, hypothetically, out the gate, Project L is going to push team synergy off rip so that you can play what you like. So if there's people who want to play like Heimerdinger and Teemo, and if, you know, in a, in a typical fighting game, them two probably won't have a lick of synergy, right? And there's a coin flip if they're going to have synergy, right? But maybe with the way this game is going to work, they'll build their kit so that they can work together, right? And that's going to be the difficult part of this game is finding strategies that work with your team against other teams. Again, pushing strategy, right? Now, execution and combos tend to stay the same because guess what? When you play a different team or a different character, whatever the BNBs are to do damage is what it's going to be, right? However, strategies and how you play your character in different matchups or even the same matchup changes and evolves over time because characters get buffed. Characters gain new moves. The games change. It could be a new update, new iteration. A character could get weaker. You know what I'm saying? Players get better. The meta changes. Meta shift. There's a lot of things that come in the fighting games that don't get taken into consideration. And when people groan about execution in fighting games, it's like, well, why are you groaning? Right? When half of you crying about, you know, execution can't even execute a simple BNB when it's time. You know, you can't even land your hits. So why are you upset? You know, because you wanted to spend 900 hours practicing something. Not everyone has that kind of time. And I think one of the biggest aspects is to push people into the competitive sphere, right? And Project L in particular most likely will do that. You know, this is to help people who don't play fighting games get into them. I feel Project L is designed around the team strategy and how you can win with your team and how it can be more satisfying to win with your team. So what am I going to do with this here? How am I going to round this out? Easy. Simplification of fighting games doesn't mean strategies are easy because you're still playing someone on the other end. You're not fighting the CPU. You're playing another actual living opponent on the sticks. So you have to understand. This helps you and the other guy, you know, however, while the execution may be easy, if you can't beat them in neutral, you're just not going to win. It doesn't matter how easy the game's inputs are. And Battle for the Grid has proven, in my honest opinion, whether you play it or not, that having simplified special moves doesn't mean anything. There's still strategy. So, yeah. This is, uh... This is my little TED talk on this. Um, that's pretty much it, you know. I don't want to make this too long, but this is pretty much how I feel right now. 
I will be the first to say really quickly also to kind of put nail in the coffin on this is that I'm a big fan of execution. I mean, I'm a chip player. I play nothing but high execution characters in fighting games, like every single time. Marvel 3, Dante Virgil Strider. You know, hell, I play DMC 5 on keyboard. You know what I'm saying? Freaking chip. I've played Zotto. I've played Johnny. You know, I've played mad characters in Guilty Gear. Obviously, Chip was the main, but I've played mad characters in Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is a high execution game for crying out loud. I played Marvel 2. I can, I can do ROM Infinites. You know, I've played it at a fairly high level. I'm still, I'm not, I'm not super duper high level, but I can play it at a fairly high level. You know, like I've played mad fighting games, KOF 13. Like, I, it's just too many games, too many games. I've played too many games, and I've played too many high execution characters. To even remotely have someone come into this video and tell me all oh, your capping and this that the other like no no brother no no just just no you know when you're able to do manual installs with chip manual teleport installs without hitting someone while standing still on a stick you come talk to me you know and i don't know and see this is what i mean right this that's like a low key that's like not even low key, that's a high key ex execution flex right but flexing that i can execute that is irrelevant towards winning Right? Just because I can mangle install doesn't mean that it's gonna this is gonna let me win. There's other there's other facets to winning. You know, and I think you shouldn't undermine any of that. Because at the you shouldn't sacrifice strategy for execution in my opinion. Not anymore. Focus on playing the game and playing the game well and getting more players to play it competitively and even more making them more hungry to get good is like the important part. So but I think that's gonna do it here for real though. So with that being said, you guys let me know how you feel about this in the comments below. Talk to me about how you feel about execution because to be honest with you, I think Product L is on the right track and I think if more fighting games take this approach, there's a good chance we might get more players. So let's see, talk to me, peace.